name is Jane Latis Emmert. I'm a Montana artist and I'm here to show you some watercolor basics. Today we're going to work on using paper called Yupo, Y-U-P-O. It's a plasticky material that allows the paint to travel rapidly and it's very different from traditional watercolor paper. I'm going to start by showing you the materials I use. I choose a John Pike palette and I take tubes of watercolor paint, squeeze them into the palette based on colors, yellows, reds, browns, greens, blues. So the warm side of your palette, the warm colors are on the left, the cooler colors are on the right. This is just a sponge, I use it for absorption and I also use it for texturing. I like to be very portable. This is a brush holder from CheapJoes.com that allows me to carry and protect my brushes. In watercolors there are two types of brushes. There are flats and there are rounds. I prefer the one inch flat with the long bristles on it. The rounds have the size of them on the side of the brush. This is a two, it's a fine brush. This is a 10 and this is a 24 inch brush. Notice that there's a lot more bristle with the bigger numbers. These hold a lot more water and you'll always try to start with your biggest brushes first and then work down to the details at the end. But you don't start and do a whole painting with a small brush. Um, the idea in watercolor is to get loose and use big brushes first. I also use a traveling palette. Um, this is for in my studio. This is called a Yarka set. And what I love about the Yarka set is that you get 24 professional grade paints and the little mixing area in this nice little portable palette. I take this a lot when I uh, plein air paint. I live near Glacier National Park. I carry this little set, a travel book of Arches watercolor paper, and then a, uh, my tube with my paints in it. This all fits conveniently in my backpack and I'm ready to go. Um, the paper we're going to work with today is called Yupo. Unlike traditional watercolor paper, this is plastic and it's very, very slick. So the paint travels rapidly on Yupo. It's the only paper that is erasable and that has its pluses and minuses. You, when you paint on Yupo, you have the ability to trim down something you don't like, erase it, subtract. It also has the disadvantage that um, I was painting outside at an art show once and it started to rain and it washed my paint right off the page. So we're going to start with a little bit of Yupo today and I just want to try these tulips in front of us. Yupo takes quite a long time to dry so when you do the Yupo, let me tell you when I set up as a right-handed artist I have my palette on the right with my paints, I keep my brushes and water on my right, and I have a little blotting paper towel here. And the reason for that is, if my water was on the left hand side, every time I came across my paper, I'm at risk of dripping into the painting, and I've, I've ruined enough paintings that I've learned not to do that. Start your painting. You pretend like you have magic ink, and you paint the shape of the tulip just with water and you have to get down and look at the reflection that you're leaving so that you know that you've wetted the entire shape that you want and that you have gotten it juicy wet. It can't be satiny. It has to be juicy, uh, shiny, glossy wet. If it isn't, then the paint won't travel on the water in the way that I want it to. The magic of Yupo is letting that paint travel. Now that I have the shape that I like, I'm going to come in and with, when I teach young kids they all make the sound effects for me. But you touch the paint and it spreads rapidly across the flower. And you have to make sure you touch all of the edges because if the paint dries without, if the water dries without any paint on it, obviously you won't get a flower shape. Now I like to combine a few different colors and you let them mix 
on the paper. The Yupo will mix itself. And I'm trying to see the edge of every petal so that I define it. And yet I'm not trying to totally outline and define the piece. Um, I want the paint to travel on the water. Now there are highlights in the tulip. And so I'm going to add some little touches of darks and let them run that I see in the petal. And it will create, obviously the red and blue together will create some purples. And there's a little touch of yellow, some highlights in it. And certain paints are better what I call pushers than others. Look at how the yellow strongly pushes the other parts of it. While it is still nice and wet, I'm also going to come in and I'm going to create a stem. And I'm very careful that I touch just the edge of it. Anything I touch, I give it permission to run. When you paint a painting, if you can carry touches of your color, touches of the flower color into the leaves, it creates a continuity in the painting. So I'm actually going to put some pinks and some blues into my stem and leaves. And you'll see as it dries that it creates a, um, a sense of turning of the leaf or shadows. I think I'm going to stop there. I have one spot that doesn't have um, a very good edge on it. So with a clean brush I'm going to sneak in here and, oh there is water there. Okay, I'm just going to let that spread a little bit. You take that and very carefully set it aside and let it dry. It takes a good 45 minutes for a Yupo painting to dry and as it dries it will continue to paint itself and that's the magic of Yupo. Alright, what we're going to do in the next class is I'm going to teach you how to create a textured image that you play on the paper, let it dry, and then you'll come back in and see what is in the painting. What, what do you want to pull out of the texture that you created? Just like a wood carver sometimes will carve an eagle and someone will say, well, how did you know to carve an eagle? And he'll say, it was in the wood. When I paint with textures, I see shapes in the colors that I mix, and then I create the painting from what I think the paper and paint have inside of them and what I'm trying to bring out. I'll be back uh, with another demonstration next week. Thank you so much.